In this episode, we'll talk about the difference between volume and loudness. Now, are volume and loudness the same thing? The answer is no, they're not. And let me explain why first with some examples. Number one, if you can remember back to the days when we used to watch TV, think before 2010, and when you were watching TV, your show was on, then the show cut to a commercial, and the commercial suddenly seemed a lot louder than the show was. And you didn't change the volume on your TV. So what happened there? That's a difference in loudness. And likewise, imagine your favorite popular music song and then compare that to another song. One song may sound a lot louder than the other, even when you don't change the volume on your phone or your headphones or your TV or whatever you're listening on. That's also an example of loudness. So let's talk this through. What is volume, first of all? Volume is what you adjust on your playback device. It is on your TV, it's on your phone or your computer, whatever it is. You typically turn a knob or some other type of control, and that sends literally more power to your playback device, to your speakers, to your headphones, or whatever it is. So it's actually moving more air by sending more power to that speaker. That's volume. Now, what's loudness on the other hand? Well, loudness is actually defined by the audio file itself, the digital audio file. And there are a few characteristics that define overall loudness, but the main one is what is called amplitude. Consider all audio is represented as a waveform. They're actually waves that are moving the molecules in the air around you. And when it's in an audio file, the larger the amplitude of the waves, generally, the louder it sounds. However, it's a little bit more nuanced than that. If, for example, we play back this wave that tops out at minus 6 dB, and we play another one where it sustains for a longer period of time, you tell me which one sounds louder. So another part of overall loudness is how long a waveform at a certain amplitude sustains over time. If it sustains longer, it will generally sound louder. Now, to measure loudness, why couldn't we just use a metric that gets an average of the amplitude? Well, that's exactly what dBRMS is. Now, if you're not familiar with that term, dB, of course, stands for decibels. RMS stands for root mean square. It's basically a way to average the overall amplitude of the audio. Now, the problem is that it doesn't work out very well. And the reason it doesn't work out, here are two examples. Number one is from a podcast where the hosts are talking constantly. The second example is from a drama, a short film that's a drama. And in dramas, there are often silent portions between lines of dialogue, just to kind of add emotional weight or whatever the case may be. The problem is if you use something like dbrms to measure the loudness to get the average amplitude, all of those silent portions in the drama are going to bring that average down. So even though the dialogue may be exactly as loud in the drama as it was in the podcast, the dbrms reading is going to say that the drama was quieter. But to our ears, they both sound the same. It is an old maxim of mine that when you have excluded the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. It is an old maxim of mine that when you have excluded the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. So what do we do? Well, it turns out there are newer metrics for measuring perceived loudness, the way that humans hear loudness. And the first one is something called loudness units K-weighted relative to full scale, which is an absolute mouthful. <laughs> Let's talk about that one a little bit. It's often abbreviated LKFS. It's defined by the ITU, which is the International Telecommunication Union. Now, the European Broadcast Union took that same definition of an algorithm for measuring overall perceived loudness, and they call it instead LUFS, which may be a term that you've heard. LUFS stands for loudness units relative to full scale. People have argued about which is the best term. European Broadcast Union says that LUFS is the best term from a scientific naming standpoint. Whatever the case may be, for our purposes, they're the same thing. LKFS, LUFS. Now the question is, how does LUFS measure loudness differently than something like dbRMS? Here are a few examples on how they're different. First of all, it measures integrated loudness. That is, 
it measures the entire program. So if we're talking about a video, it measures the audio from the very start of the video all the way to the very end of the video, not just some portion in the middle. Secondly, it takes into account the really quiet portions. So for example, in the drama, those silent portions in between lines of dialogue. If anything falls below minus 70 LUFS, it actually takes that out of the calculation so that it doesn't skew the overall number. And what that means in practical terms with the example we used before, the podcast and the drama actually measure the same because the dialogue sounds the same loudness in both of them. The silent portions in the drama didn't skew the number. Additionally, LUFS applies what's called a K weighting to more carefully represent the way that we as humans hear. We're not going to get into the details on that, but that's another thing that it does. There are also a whole bunch of maths. <laughs> if you want to dig into the maths, I'll put a link down below for the ITU specification for LKFS. You can read through it all and you can do your maths. Now, let's bring this back to reality for us. For television broadcast, there are requirements for the broadcasters on how loud their program needs to be, how loud their audio needs to be. For example, in the European Broadcast Union, European Union, audio needs to be at minus 23 LUFS. That's the target. In the United States, it needs to be minus 24 LKFS. That's the target. They can't go over that. If they go over that, they could be fined. And the purpose of that, of course, is to help provide a better experience for those of us that are watching television. Now, when it comes to streaming services online, which is where most of us watch our shows these days, there are no requirements. So there is no specified target imposed by governments. What that means in practical terms is that the streaming platforms each define their own targets. For example, Spotify, their target's minus 14 LUFS. Same thing for YouTube, it's minus 14 LUFS. Now, in practical terms, what does YouTube do? If you upload a video that's louder than minus 14 LUFS, it will actually pull the loudness down when it plays it back to your audience. If your audio is uploaded and it is quieter than minus 14 LUFS, YouTube does nothing, just lets it be. On Spotify, it basically moves everything to minus 14 LUFS. And again, the idea on Spotify, for example, is so that the listening experience is better for those that are listening. So they're not going to have to crank their volume up or down each time when a new song comes on. Now, out of curiosity, if you ever want to find out how loud a video is in terms of LUFS on YouTube, play the video back, right-click in the frame of the video, choose Stats for Nerds. It will show you an audio offset. That is to say, it will show you how far off the audio in that video is, in terms of loudness, from the target of minus 14 LUFS. So for example, if it says minus six, that means that that video's audio sits at minus 20 LUFS. It's six LUFS quieter than the target of minus 14. Now, here's where I'm going to share an opinion. This is purely opinion. It is also a recommendation from a variety of people in the podcast world and other people in the audio world as well. My recommendation, actually, when you're uploading a YouTube video is to target minus 16 or minus 17 LUFS. Now, why not the target of minus 14 that YouTube has established? In my opinion, minus 14 is a very good target for popular music. It makes sense. It's loud, plenty loud. And it's just a good place to be able to normalize all of the audio so that you're not cranking your volume up and down. That amount of compression is pretty standard for popular music anyway, so it won't drastically change the quality of the audio that you're getting from all of the popular music that's been mastered out of the studios. Now, on the other hand, when you're talking about talking head videos or any sort of content that is primarily spoken word, that's where I feel like the target really should be minus 16 or minus 17 LUFS. And the reason I say that is that it retains a little bit more dynamic range, so it doesn't sound quite so crunchy. If you push dialogue audio to minus 14 LUFS, in my opinion, in most cases, it starts to sound really compressed and it isn't necessarily something that's really pleasant to listen to, especially if you're listening to something for a long period of time, like an audiobook, a podcast, or even a talking head video. So for me, I typically recommend minus 16 or minus 17 LUFS. Now, how do you do that? Let's cover that in an upcoming video. Get yourself subscribed if you're not already, and we'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon. Yeah.